That's, uh, yeah, we are now. Hello, recording. everybody at home. Hello, let's everyone wave to the people at home. Because I know you always feel a bit left out if it starts in the in mid session. Welcome. We're still letting people in. Was the stragglers? Thank you all of you for putting the word out and getting so many many people to come along. Thank you to all of you who are not performing tonight, but have come to support your fellow hot, hot poets. If you've come to support your fellow hot sparks, wave at me. If you're not performing tonight, but you've come, look, look, look at the support you have. That's love. That's so nice. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna have all of all of fifteen of you, I think. Um, or Mike, is that a yes, please, you want to perform? Um, yes, Believe Mike. It, yeah. Mike, amazing. For some reason, I, 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 I can't ever find your, um, your email. So Mike is performing as well, Tim. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put that list back in the chat. So once you've performed your poem, you're going to have a look at that list and you are going to choose who goes next, okay? This is what we call popcorn. Is that popcorning? Is that right, Tim? Yeah, um, so just, just to keep it fresh, keep us on our toes, so we don't get too complacent. It's nice to be in our nerves a little bit. Uh, and we're just going to re receive the invitation from whoever gives it to us. We're going to do our poem and then uh, we shall marvel at your genius and applaud you. And then you will pass it on to the next person and so on and so on. Um, so tonight performing but not in this order we have Harula Ladd, David Thompson, Paul Tem, Jane Hutchinson, Takoni um, Olabayo, uh, Michael John Sims, Gail Webb, Kath Gifford, Becky Golding, Angela Higgs, Alison Lee, Jay Farley, Rosie Barrett, Kerry Baker, Tim King and Mike exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark because I can't remember your last name Mike but um <laughs> which is you're on mute so you can, but you know who you are, your exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Just to tell all of you, everybody at home, everybody who has come to support these guys, they, once they've performed their poem, which they've been working on so hard over four, five, five weeks and four workshop sessions, and they've met me and Chris and Johnny Fluffy Punk and Francesca Beard, and they've had loads of sort of, you know, they've worked with each other. They've done- We had a big of, meeting with scientists as well. They had a big meeting with scientists. They came, you know, we've had a really big process. So they're gonna share their poems tonight and then they're gonna send them to us and we are gonna turn them into a Hot Poet Sparks book, which is gonna be a, an amazing collection of all these ideas. So this isn't the last time we'll meet or isn't the penultimate time. There will be a book share, a book launch. So sort of hopefully in May, where we're inviting you all. I'm uh, in my mind, in my dream mind, you'll all be there in your boxes holding your books up um, and reading from them. And we'll do a really big book book celebration. Um, so that will be amazing and awesome. So yeah. Um, so I, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a sacrificial poem. Is that all right? And then just to, and then I get to choose who goes first. And sure. when, and when it's your go, I it would be great if you could just context your poems a little bit by saying maybe, um, what, yes, what your spark is, what your idea was, and and maybe if you spoke to anybody about that. But just a little, just a couple of lines of context, and we're going to be asking for that for the book as well. So, um, yeah. So shall I spotlight myself? And I will. I'm going to give you an example of how it works, and then I'm going to choose somebody to go next. Um, so hello, I'm Liv. Um, this wasn't, so my spark wasn't, but in this case it was, it was wind turbines. Um, and I wrote this poem quite a long time ago, but I'm bringing this poem in now. Um, so what would happen if the world was full of wind turbines? What could they achieve? This poem may not cover that because it was written several years ago, but I'm doing it because I like it and I'm warming you up. It's called Sky Spinners. You're a wizard. A whooshah, a sonic swoosher, an air slicer, a low flying bird dicer, an H2O ricer. You're a ghostly three armed angel standing at the gateway to the cloud kingdom. You're waving, we're drowning. You're a trio of eyebrows, all frowning. You're a kinetic kite sifting light, a robot soldier in the sustainability fight. You're a thin man with a fat plan. You're a small plug in a big dam. You're a vibrating vertical battering ram. Armed, farmed, and sometimes alarmed, you're a three-headed snake already charmed. You're a flower, power, tower, an eco-wower, weaving electricity streamers for ideological dreamers. You're a ghost ship made of air, a beleaguered beacon of nimby despair, a dangerous place for drying underwear. You're proof we care. Propellers without planes, the champions of change, moving with magnetic grace across the Earth's frenetic face. 
You're a semaphore warning seen from space, sent to save the human race, like a match is sent to save the dark. Your hope's art. An apple put back in an empty apple cart, a sail on the all new Noah's Ark, a piece of sellotape on a world torn clean apart. You stop my heart, you start my heart, you stop my heart, you start my heart. Your clock hands on a ticking planet. And that was my, so you, this is when you get to practice and I'm gonna put, uh, um, I've taken off speak of you, you get to practice your applause. So you can do this in lots of different ways. So you can write comments in the chat, please write comments in the chat, please make sure you've got it set to everyone. Otherwise you'll end up writing comments just to one of us. You can write say, oh, that was, that was wonderful. Or I really feel like a winter by now. Or you can, you can act, as Angela's showing, you can do little reactions in your boxes. You can do little love hearts. You could, if you've got, you can do, yeah, you can do little party symbols. Um, you can also, yes, you can clap and we might ask people to unmute. Let's have a go. Everyone unmute and clap and see what that sounds like. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, mute yourselves. Um, <laughs> so um, fabulous. So that's kind of how it works. And then I will then say, okay, okay, I'm looking at the list. I'm looking at the list. I am going to pick to go first to start us off tonight. Um, I'm going to pick Tim King. Last in, first out. Um, so I'm, I know. Let me just put you on spotlight, Tim. How are you this evening? I'm okay. I'm really very nervous for some absurd reason. I think more for the poem than for me. If you know what I mean. Yeah, on behalf of the poem. On well, behalf us, of the poem, I'm quite nervous. But otherwise, tell, I'm... tell us your spark then. What was your spark for the poem? Well, my spark was um, I, I read about the North Three solar power station in Morocco, um, and it, despite being a solar power station, it works all through the night thanks to some eco-friendly batteries. So I thought I'd look into them. Oh, so you've been looking into eco-friendly batteries that power solar power plants through the night yes that can that can actually you know are powerful enough to like power the electricity grid that's really interesting that's really exciting can we all just like give just like tim some support and make some kind of hand gestures to say that we are all giving him the power of solar power batteries um so that he knows that he is not alone so let's thank you for starting us off tim i know that that was a that's a tall order but it's okay. fine. I'm, it's, I'm be glad to get it out of the way <laughs> and relax and enjoy the rest of the evening. Um, OK, so this is one of those poems. It's called From the Rim of the Crater, and it's one of those poems where the, the first line is also the title. So, From the Rim of the Crater. Volcanic lava glows red hot, flows for miles radiating energy, counterintuitively keeps a constant temperature gradually thickens, sets first to rock, then cools. On the inactive slopes of the mountain opposite, patches of winter snow glitter in warm summer sun, stubbornly sticking to zero degrees, slowly, surely melting, and yet, as yet, unmelted. In common with most physical materials, water, silicate rocks and elemental silicon neither heat nor cool as they freeze or thaw. Any energy liberated in the making of bonds being precisely mirrored by that required to break them. Nature reveling in symmetry. In the valleys below, mon monuments to our energy degeneracy stipple the landscape. Monolithic power stations, oil depots, gas pipelines, nuclear reactors, ideal terror targets. Meanwhile, in intervening fields, wind and solar farms quietly conduct their seasonal businesses, sporadic outputs underwritten by filthy legacy baseload industries. Modern, safer, cleaner options beg reliable storage. You know, for when the sun don't shine and the wind won't blow, in the course of the melting and setting of silicon, as energy flows either in or out, the thermometer predictably never moves, reads a steady 1,414 degrees centigrade. A dustbin full, 
of barely liquid silicon has the thermal capacity to supply an average UK home's electricity for a fortnight without ever quite turning to stone. Trickle in sufficient renewables and our lights will burn for eternity. Silicon storage goes far beyond conventional batteries. Raw materials are cheap, non-toxic and abundant. The consistent high temperature provides rock solid power and unwavering electromechanical efficiency. It's essentially portable geothermal energy. Not pick it up and put it in your pocket portable, but shove it on a truck and take it anywhere, plonk it down next to a couple of wind turbines and a gang of solar panels, wire everything together with a generator and Robert's your parent's sibling portable. Scalable, rechargeable, versatile, non-volatile, safe, resilient and mighty, latent heat storage in silicon. They've been developing it down under for a decade now, but chances are you heard it here first. Right, you can unmute yourself to make some noise for Tim because the amount of... Bravo! Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Brilliant. Hey. The amount of research, the amount of, the amount I just learned then, Tim, you know. That, Thank to, you. To, that is a... That is a yeah, damn straight hot poet science science expedition of innovation. Well done, great start. So, Tim, um, please leave comments for Tim about what you've learned. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, who would you like to go next, Tim? Oh, I hadn't thought about that. Hold on, let me have a look. Um, how about Jane Hutchinson? Oh, look, I think she actually screamed. <laughs> <laughs> Um, is that is that not going to happen, Jane? Um, I've got you on spotlight now. You can you can look, get it over and done with. Yeah, no, it's fine. I, it was actually a sharp intake of breath because oh, okay. I was thinking <laughs> it's not going to it's not going to be me second, and then it was. <laughs> <laughs> so well, there's no screaming. Don't worry. I, how oh, are you, God. Jane? Have you enjoyed this journey? I have really, really enjoyed this journey. Thank you so much, and I'm thrilled to. Have, you know, been inspired by so many other wonderful poets and all, it's just remarkable, um, the subjects that have been chosen and how we've all come together and done this organically. It's just brilliant. So thank you very much, Liv and Chris, and thank you so much to everyone else. Um, Fabulous. Yeah. So what was your spark? So what was okay, your Okay, my spark, my spark. Yeah, it, it is um, something that, 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 that I, I actually personally feel um, very strongly about. Um, it, it's about how we choose to live in the future. And that's a big, big part of the discussion around climate change, uh, for sure, because it's about how we impact the land, of course. And uh, Tiny House Community Bristol um, was founded by Rachel Butler uh, to work in different ways, in circles, to actually um, find solutions and uh, network in order to create tiny house communities, uh, regenerative, sustainable um, and low impact, obviously. So these things have really kind of touched my heart, but it was her words that that really uh, that just turned a little lamp on in my in my head. Um, and it was unlock the land and we will do it. And that, to me, said, right, let's go. So on that note, um, I will read the poem. We locked up the land. We grabbed it, clod for clump, with deeds of ownership. A promise of autonomy in self-imposed imprisonment behind a closed door. Our centralised, consumer-driven mindsets stuck like a rusty bolt, no longer fit for purpose. We locked down the world. A viral presence pushed us two metres apart, pressed us into fitness outside once a day, made us think about ourselves, made us live with ourselves sitting tight on notice from nature. We saw her breathe in our absence, awaken in freedom, a pause of possibility. 
Time to unbind the land, unburden us. Let's unlearn boundaries, collaborate, dig up the roots of disconnected systems, compose them into good stuff, grow skills in return. Let the earth repair, live small. Communities can build, reside in us. This can be the scope of our diversity. Dynamic sociocracy. We integrate, we learn to nurture longings, feed our dreams. Set free upon the landscape, open door to new beginnings. We step into interchange into circles of action. Unlock the land and we will do it. <laughs> Yay! 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 I love it. Jane, I love it. You do. Yeah. Thank you. Love the message and that was yes. such a brilliant reading. Thank you so much. It was such great. Um, <laughs> oh, heart's <laughs> going. Ah, Thank glorious. you so much. So many lovely I lines. Like, you, I like the bit. Oh, Sorry. Claire's trying to say something. What are you saying, Claire? Sorry. I like the bit about action and, and that sort of thing. You know, it's a, rather than thinking things through, just being very active. Yes. So we can interrupt. Yes. No, yeah, absolutely. I've joined. I'm in. Yeah, you joined. You? I've joined. I, I, I don't know about you, but I'd quite like a tiny house immediately. Uh, <laughs> so would I. I yeah. don't think it's going to happen that quick, but uh, yes, I'm. I'm going to join some circles and see how we go. Yeah. Well, Amazing. I hope you'll invite us all round one at a time. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure we can, you'd be surprised. You can turn them into the TARDIS equivalents if you try. <laughs> you had me at clod and clump. Well, thank you. Yeah. I'm glad you like that. I want to get the Midlands in there, you see. Clod and Club. Great. What Clod a great pair. Lovely. Thank, thank, you. You, thank, thank so you so much. Jane, who who are you gonna who are you gonna pass the bat on to? Oh, let's I'll, have a look. I'll put the oh, list my. back in the chat so yes, you please so it's, uh, it's fresh. <laughs> um right. here we are. Ah, right, where are we? I can't find Ooh, I'm still shaking. I'm sorry. I'm still shaking. Oh. Just, just pick the first name you see. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Um, yes, I would like to pass on the baton to Angela Higgs. Angela Higgs of the sunset. I feel it's like a sparky, flaming baton. So watch your hands. <laughs> Thank you. Well done, Jane. Thank you so much. I'll let Chris introduce Angela. We're, we're, we're going to try <laughs> <laughs> Angela. <laughs> okay. All right. So I got my sound on. Yeah. <laughs> tell us. Tell us about your spark, Angela. My spark is the um, solar diversification projects that so Somerset County Council are involved with. Um, and I invited my technical expert along, who's the energy manager. Somerset County Council, but unfortunately she's got COVID. <laughs> well, we're uh, recording it. It's a recurring thing. Yeah. Recurring yeah. Thing. <laughs> well, um, you know, some of us have got COVID and they're still here. I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so basically, the project I was inspired by um, is currently going through a, a key decision process. So I can't talk about it specifically, but um, it's about using brownfield sites for solar farms. Because um, there's a lot of nimbyism out there about solar farms, and you know, so it's about using sites that wouldn't otherwise be used for anything else. So, right, anyway, that was like the spark I had. Wonderful. Let's hear it, okay. Angela. Woo! Angela, big deep breath. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> right, Solar Dawn. Standing here in 2040, looking out over the fields where I took my daily Boris walks in the great COVID lockdowns of the 20s, that precious, wild and diverse landscape which saved my sanity. Buttercups and sunflowers illuminating sunshine smiles onto our four-walled faces, re-energising our faith that humanity could collaborate with each other and nature to defeat a common enemy. 
I breathe again. For here before me, I gaze, giving thanks to the rejuvenation generation, for row after row, not of crops, but photovoltaic cells, stretching far beyond the event horizon. I celebrate the solar dawn with the same exaltation as my first hug, first exhalation post-COVID. You see, these silicon arrays synthesize photosynthesis, tracking the sun's rays like millions of sun worshippers on golden sandy beaches before COVID grounded the plains and we realised that the best holidays were those spent in the arms of those closest to us before the wars and the scarcity and the suffering. I remember how we gathered at stone circles and ground zeros giving thanks together at the summer solstice to Sol and Ra and all the 21st century godlike heroes who helped us through those climatically challenging pandemic years. Spiritual energies rising anew across the expanses of our barren lands. I give thanks that we were brave enough then to breathe through that pregnant pause, to give birth to a new normal, ending our resource hungry relationship with fossil fuels, to go full circle, to put the sun back into the centre of our universe, the centre of our lives, to stop seeing the sun as our eternal adversary, because just like the earth in its orbit astronomically, we are a solar dependent body, positively electron bonded to our sun for life. Electric word life, it means forever. I give thanks to the landowners of brownfield sites and war abandoned crop starved farms for uniting with 2020 vision to sow electric fields, uploading megawatt peaks of power to our local communities, to decarbonize our built environment, our homes, workplaces and schools, to nurture a renewable mindset, cultivate clean green jobs from the oily ashes of our industrialized past, storing and exporting energy to feed our neighbors grids and mouths. I give thanks that we learn to share the solar love so that we might transport the next generation sustainably across boundaries that no longer have a place in this whole world view into the future, regenerating hope. All this joy I bear witness to in microcosm, just as a little ray of sunshine excites electrons in a solar cell. Hey. Please unmute yourself for Angela, because that was an epic. Oh, what a beauty. Oh, what, you did so yeah. well. <laughs> Amazing. Well Amazing. What enormous scale. And I love the fact that you bring it back to such a tiny, tiny little uh, little spark. That was really beautiful. Such a great journey. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And you read it so well. And, you know, I can tell everyone's really nervous tonight. And uh, and understandably, there's like 50 people here. And it's really sort of, this has been a big process. But you read it so well. And you really brought it to life. And I felt I felt it. And it was great. It was great imagery. Well done, Angela. And, and, uh, you, kept, and you kept the Prince quote in there, which really pleased me. I did. Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, points for that one. <laughs> so don't forget to read your comments, Angela. But also, I've just put in Poets Left to Read in the box <laughs> so who would you like to go next i know who i would like to go next oh. because i've been a fan of the mycology so it's got to be becky <laughs> becky golding becky are you okay <laughs> to go next because i think becky had said to me earlier i don't want to go early because i've got somebody um where is becky there are you okay to go now becky uh yeah i'll go if there's a recording so they, so um Oh, did, well, have they have they missed? We can wait. We can save you if 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 you're waiting for someone to come in. Um, okay. Yes. Thank you. Save Would me. That a be right? save Sorry, me. Angela. Becky's just right. waiting for somebody. Thank you to so come much in. for picking me, Angela. Though I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Angela, sorry, you're going to have to pick your one. second choice. Yeah. Okay. It's got to be Tony then. To Coney, let me, yeah. <laughs> Didn't get away with that. You could have, you could have um, been, been much, uh, much later. Oh, well, let me just remove Becky from the spotlight. Um, your time will come, Becky. Your time will come. To Coney, how are you this evening? Hi, everyone. I'm fine. Thank you. It's great to be here. Yeah, it's really nice to have you here. Tell us about your spark. 
Um, so the spark is about rising sea levels and climate change. And I decided to focus on Tuvalu. Hands up if anyone has heard of Tuvalu. For now. Yeah, I'm gonna have to put it in the gallery, yeah, to see if tell us about tell us yeah. about it. So for those who haven't. Yeah, it's a, it's a group of nine islands in the South Pacific Ocean. It's around Australia and New Zealand, if that puts it in context. And it's a group of islands that are sinking daily um, slash annually. Last year, um, the Minister of Environment gave a speech from you know, water reaching up to his knees to show how bad the sinking had become in recent years. And a big part of what I was trying to write is the island's plea and the need for climate finance to build some resilience and reverse some of the cost of climate change. So I've just tried to show in my poem actively how the island is sinking and what the world can do about it and how the, how the Tuvaluans are fighting the sinking. So I'd like to thank um, Haliu Tekau, the Assistant Environment Officer of the Tuvaluan Department of Environment, and Margretha Wawarinke, she's an international law expert. Now these two people were an instrumental part of me researching my poem and you know on this call, but I just like to thank them all the same. And I will proceed with the poem right now. The, pro the poem is titled, I Am No Island. And it's um, sort of divided into two parts. Part one, hi, I'm Tuvalu. I was born in the planet's corner. A floating garland on the horizon, a biscuit dunked in a cup of tea. But I'm near the finger's edges, sinking in the South Pacific seas. And on me are people playing, schooling, loving, walking, growingly worried people, to Tuvaluans hounded by water. The smell of damp on their doorsteps and despair in their throats surround their restrained hopes of promises made in conferences shades and ignored when planes touch down. I had a little gavel welcome change in Paris, but in Glasgow six years later, it's still bridge underwater. It's strange how in the hundred years, the world around me has changed in bounds. I've asked, and the scientists say it's greenhouse gases and blue skies, trapping the sun's red hot heat. And I wouldn't believe it if the water around me wasn't siphoning up the heat, swelling around me and swallowing me. When island starts to sink, the people on there might sing. Is it home when you can no longer stand on it? Is it fair the world brings us to our knees? Too. I'm running for my life, but there's nowhere to go. So I barricade against the waves and build sea walls around my coasts. Home is a movable fist, but kitchen innovations need money. So I plant hope, water years, and a way to harvest of jingling coins, cash and counting machines, and pens scratching checks. And in some ways, things must change, maybe not quickly, but quietly. My last sand grain will not sink. My people, my people will breathe in a new kind of home. I will ease their flooding hearts. Thank you. Woo! Yeah. 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 Really good. Really beautiful stuff. Yeah. Really beautiful Lovely. stuff. Thanks, everyone. Amazing. That, yeah. That line, is it a home when you can no longer stand yeah. on it? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, there's so many lovely lines in there. And I think speaking from the position of the island, it really, you know, it's a, it's a strong move. It just connects us immediately. Yeah. Makes it personal. Um, I think that's a great choice. Um, and I love part two. Part two really, really worked. Sort of having, yeah, that, that came right in. You've done a fantastic job. Thank you, and thank you so much for your help, Liv and Chris. You've been amazing. And everyone, lovely points, lovely sessions. I do know Tuvalu. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, my, yeah. my, my, my son's godmother lived there with her family for several years with the British Council. Yeah. And, yeah. It's, it's really they, they have very good memories. Oh. Well, it's a long time ago now. Um, well, we've, I feel like I know the island from, from, from the heart out now which is beautiful um so Tony, who are you going to pick to go next oh i'll have to find that list oh no i'm looking at it now oh you've already on it yeah i will pick the first name on the list harala lad 
Aha, fabulous. Harula, wave at me so I can make you, um, I can see you, Harula. Um, how you doing? Yeah, okay, bit of a theme this evening. I'm also quite nervous, but also quite excited. I've really enjoyed it. And yeah, this poem means a lot to me now because a lot of work has gone into it, just like everybody's. Um, it's amazing, isn't it? The amount of work that we've already heard tonight. You can really feel that in everyone's piece. So um, I'm excited to hear yours. You. <laughs> Tell us what your spark was. So um, my spark is the idea of a universal basic income and the potential for that to break the chain between um, work and consumerism. So the idea being that if everybody has the basics, they won't feel the need to work as much desperately just to feed themselves and our kind of priorities will change and also will free up a lot of human ingenuity to actually address the issues that we're facing. So I think UBI could be a really powerful tool um, to help deal with the issues of climate change. So this is called Turn on the Tap. 14.5 million living in poverty in the world's fifth largest economy until our chancellor was forced to spend 69 billion on a word none of us had ever heard of. Furlough proved we could have found the funds for universal basic income, slightly less at 67 billion paid for through reduced corporate tax breaks and subsidies, just 3.4% of GDP. <laughs> to make absolute poverty extinct. Wouldn't that be something? When the first unconditional money hit mum's bank account, she cried with eyes that could now see a future. But trusting it took time. You're not supposed to eat normally just after a fast or you'll be sick. So we let relief drip into our days. <laughs> first in minutes, dancing round the kitchen, feeding shopping into starved cupboards, now bulging till their doors wouldn't shut. Then in hours, a river that brought mum home two full days a week. She began helping me with my homework. Grades went up, a well-fed mind imagined going to university, freed from the urgent need to leave school early and start earning. Knocks on the door brought not fear, but friends. Neighbours came to chat, share ideas. Our street hadn't felt this alive in years. Revitalised by breathing in something other than stress and anxiety. Minds to the right, tick. For smaller, simpler government, tick. For improved physical and mental health, reducing healthcare appointments by 8%, tick. For greater purchasing power, spent straight back into the economy for essentials. Minds to the left, tick, for stronger community, healthier democracy, tick, for women economically empowered to leave violent husbands, tick, for human ingenuity, previously capped by the poverty trap, now freed to help create a society no longer chained to poor wages for making, selling, delivering poor quality goods that return to poor countries as rubbish to bury burn, breathe. Instead, the chance to say, no, we can do better. Thank you. Yay! Closely related there as well. Uh, yeah, let's hear it for Harula's future where we all have a decent wage. <laughs> Harula, check the comments out. I think you've you, you've you've won everyone. You've won you've you've won everyone with that. It's just God, it's so nice to feel that hope. <laughs> it's, it's, I actually feel it in my chest as you were speaking. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I was feeling very happy for your mum as well, and uh, and um, your fictitious fictitious family and um and i like the the how how you satisfied the right and the left views um and yeah such good work and so inspirational 
Harula, who you you get to pick who you'd like to go next. I'll put I can put the list up again. The list in the chat. Um who would you like to go next? Oh I'd love to hear Kerry, please. Kerry Baker. Yeah. Kerry Baker, Kerry Baker. <laughs> <laughs> look, Kerry looks like look again. Um, I'm gonna spotlight you, Kerry. Are you afraid? terrified <laughs> don't be afraid <laughs> oh. oh don't be afraid look you look at the, the people who've come before you they set oh. this all out yeah just oh it's so inspiring i've loved this project it's been terrifying and beautiful at the same time um. What did you do? Tell us about your spark. Okay, so um, so I was completely inspired by the Tiny Forest Project. It totally, totally went deep into my heart as soon as I heard about it. Um, and I'm really grateful for Divya's support. She's here um, from Earthwatch Europe. Um, um, and I, I kind of wanted to stay with the spark of what it actually is and try and try and try and tell the story of it because it's already sparking it's already this amazing project um and i wanted to write something that hopefully earthwatch europe can can it, it tells it says what it is and brings more people to develop this tiny forest these tiny forests in the in the urban areas which is hopefully what my poem says it does okay i'll do it Imagine if you could capture the massiveness of all of nature and hold it, observe and nurture it on a tennis court sized plot, a magnitude of possibility, but pocket sized and tiny. Imagine tiny forests are densely packed communities of native woodland marvel where 600 trees compete for growth limbs stretch high for sunlight roots dig deep for nutrients planting closely accelerates the flourishing making leafy stepping stones for wildlife transporting blooming diversity, bringing gleeful smiles in muddy wellies to make lush green hubs in urban centers. Regeneration generates roles to play. As we become stewards, tree keepers, citizen scientists, where an opening day for planting is a taking part in party where everyone will want to put their own hands in the hopeful ground and say, I was there taking part, planting trees for the future, for carbon capture, to help undo the effects of climate change, watch butterflies survey the creatures, bathe in the tenderness and cycles of nature, provide peaceful places for people to ponder and feel proud that we can imagine. Humans are as resilient as tiny forests, rising from mulchy mud to canopy, turning hope into reality. Yay! Oh, you for Kerry! Yes. Hey! Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it. Totally smashed it. <laughs> <laughs> and and I want to say because I heard the last the last where it was and I, I and I was I was sort of we gave a few like harder notes for Kerry and you have turned that poem the rewrite is fabulous. Thank Absolutely you. Fabulous. <laughs> what do you reckon, Chris? Love it. I love the music of it. I love how you delivered it as well. It was such. It felt like you you. Re I don't know. I believed you fully, and then there was just. <laughs> 
there was just this sort of reverence with which you were holding all of it and uh just read the chat it was like hope hope people are going <laughs> yeah hopeful ground but um, you know if there was by all justice you should be wheeled around to the every opening of every tiny forest in, in the country <laughs> <laughs> to perform that poem as the first spade goes in right yeah Ooh. absolutely <laughs> divya agrees didn't she do a great job yeah really and thank you for your support in helping Kerry get that poem I think you know this is a partnership and of uh, always of and you know what a wonderful poem well done yay thank you thanks <laughs> thank you Kerry thank you for just you know diving in and being so committed to it um yeah the results speak for themselves really lovely thank you um who are you going to pass it to Kerry oh 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 Oh, Where it's in there. So you've got so many comments, you've lost the whole uh, you have to scoot up. I'll put it in. I'll put the um I'll put the list in. I'm gonna go Rosie Barrett. <gasps> okay, I'm gonna I'm, 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 Okay. Hello. I'm gonna hold I'm gonna put you, I'm gonna put you, I'm gonna spotlight you, Rosie. Mm, okay. <laughs> how are you? How are you, Rosie? I'm very well, thank you now. Yep, yep. Um, if I have a coughing fit halfway through, please forgive me, but apart from that, I'm fine. Tell us your um, spark. What was your spark? Yeah. Well, I'm putting the case for mixed farms and herds of animals, and you don't have to eat them, but they are good for the planet. So that's what I'm doing. And my, my people who've helped me enormously are Emily and John, and they live at Wave Hill Farm, and this is what they do. So, title. Let's hear it for the heteromorphs. Subtitle, that's you and me, the cat on your lap, the cow in the field, not to mention the snail. Here in Devon, I know a farm. Sheep feel sunshine on their backs. Come into lamb, but otherwise mob grazed, two days at most, on one small patch of pasture, wildflower rich, onto another just the same. Sheep and cattle graze, trample, ruminate. Their droppings fertilize the soil. No tillage. Deep rooted grasses do the rest. The stock look on to where they've been, where they've been. Bean crops fix nitrogen, hold fast carbon and methane in the soil. This family has changed with modern science to older ways. And do you know what? This mixed farm, a net carbon sink. With stock on grass, there's not the cost in transport, growing grain for feed. No fertilizers leaching out, all the emissions are kept in house. Chickens give them meat and eggs to sell. Two fields with fruit and fodder trees, silvo pastures, livestock munching in the shade. Piglets rooting under trees, fallen apples gobbled up and yes, more droppings for the soil. Using the farm carbon toolkit, yes, there's one. They see they've stored many tons of CO2 equivalents a year. Organic and sustainable, carbon neutral, chemical free, people and planet friendly. Theirs is the regeneration game. Yay! Did it get there in the end? <laughs> totally. You, you did good uh yeah because because i know what you were how you're feeling with it last week and i you've really turned that round and like even to get in a, a bruce forsyth pun you know <laughs> <laughs> well it will be lost on many but... <laughs> but, but but not on me um yeah really good job rosie I, I and really well explained and and you managed to get some really great sort of poetic poetics in there as well so yeah. well, that was the difficult bit wasn't it mm. Yeah. yeah. No, you did it. You did it. You, did you it. painted the pictures and you took us there and I felt like I was there and I could see it. And I think that's our task, isn't it? Is to take us into the heart of something so we can not just understand the concepts, but we can see it and feel it and sense it. And then if we can do that, we, we just connect with it. And I think I think you took us there. So. Well, Emily and John are here and they help me so much. They're oh, somewhere. thank you, Emily and John. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thanks to all of the people who put sort of partners and scientists and experts who have supported um, the poets, because it's really this is a 
this project is all about collaborating, you know, about sort of finding new ways to communicate the amazing work that you all do. So, yeah, thank you for all your work. And well, well done, Rosie. Uh, well, you get to choose who goes next, Rosie. So keen to un to get off to, to mute yourself. Um, you're muted, Rosie. J Jay Farley. Ah, Jay Farley, wave at me, Jay Farley. I'm 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 gonna spotlight you. I'm gonna spotlight you. Jay, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'm loving it so far. Brilliant, isn't it? Really, really amazing, really good. amazing poems. Brilliant. <sighs> So tell us about your poem, Jay. Tell us your spark. Okay. Um, so it's about um, mapping funga. Uh, my spark was from um, SPUN, which is Society for the Protection of Underground Networks. And basically what they're trying to do is map as much of the underground networks globally um, while we can. And, and, and with that also to kind of find out everything what they can do and protect it. And we're just literally just touching the surface of what kind of mycelial networks can do. And yeah, that, that's what the, the, they're investigating it and uh, finding out what it can do and mapping it and hopefully saving as much as we, as we can. Cause, um, cause basically mushrooms can save us. So that's kind of my spark. <laughs> So yeah, um, should I go for it? Definitely, I'm really excited about this one. I'm obviously excited about all of them. Okay. I'm really excited, Jay, go for it. Go and mushroom us up, mushroom us right, right up. Okay. <clears throat> okay, mapping funga. Seam on silent layer, a creep of funga readied themselves huddled in the cold, wet smack of night, waiting for the radical rooters, the myconauts, boldly going, mapping the mica, finding fungus in the world under, the hidden but not hiding. They come by moonlight, nature defending itself, the rotting beauty bounty hunters, stalking the fields, and as they dig, earthy sniffs catching in the air. Dark matter and answers dug deep surface. Soil instructions sneak under nails, seep into skin, carrying moments connected, historying in the wind. The stringy saviors spore hope. And then somehow, anarchic alchemy sprouts an idea of symbiotic, symbiotic sharing, planet caring, and it spreads and ancient shoots battle through our microplastic fears, assimilate our chicken bone single use dreams like just another scene. Networks, half a galaxy heavy, weigh in the balance and the toxic warrior diaper destroying, medicine making, bee healing, plant feeding, carbon sinking, second chance giving, ecosystem engineers kick into action. And so do we. Let's have oh, yeah. it! Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, that's an absolute player. <laughs> I don't that think, Chris, a... you had not heard that one, have you? Had you, Chris? I don't think I have. No. <laughs> wow. That is just absolute fire. It's just line after line. It doesn't let up. Um, you are a massive Funga fan. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um and you did those funga proud jay um just <laughs> thank you uh, and I, I, I just i mean i i've had the pleasure of seeing this poem kind of and then it, it pretty much came out ready done didn't it but it sort of just tweaks and just yeah. a storming a storming poem it has the science but it has the poetry in there so strongly as well and 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 the word the little word play i think someone just did it. is it mike mike and or something what was mike that and Orts, yeah 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 and and just again the sensory i guess because you're taking us deep into that you're taking us into the earth straight away and uh oh, i was just there i felt it it was just i was, it was in amongst it and unable uh, to kind of connect uh immediately that was glorious thank you 
so good so good and th this this is one that's going to be shaped it's, she's um jay's also written it to be shaped like a mushroom too and i ah. think in this case it really really works so um yeah it, it's wow sorry liv sorry about that but no yeah. no as, as long as only one of you do it i, I have to type set the book you see i'm up but I, the mushrooms not too it deserves it and it's a one a fabulous yeah. poem and i hope that you perform that and do loads of stuff with it because it deserves to really get out there and be heard and mm. smelt and felt and and just everything from your history in the wind kind of yeah it's just beautiful so great massive. well done jay you get to choose who goes next that's your reward okay. yeah um i'll scroll up. i can put it i'll put i'll put them in oh there. yeah sorry i didn't yeah. want i didn't want to disturb your comments okay um i will choose um kath gifford Ah, Kath Gifford. Wave at me, Kath, so I can see. Uh -huh. uh, oh, I've still got Jay on spotlight. There we are. Kath. Hello. How are you Hello. this evening? Good, thank you. Are you, are you <laughs> going to tell us, or are you going to tell us, Kath, what was your yes. spark? What was so your spark? my spark is veganism and climate change, and it, it grew quite a lot, and I've now got a five sonnet sequence. Oh, OK. Amazing. So, slight um, trigger warning. There are a couple of mentions of cancer and a couple of graphic images of the dairy and meat industry in there. But I hope some humour, too. Um, and because there's so much information, there's a couple of little epigraphs in front of each section. OK. Uh, first epigraph. According to specialists, the biggest way to have an impact on the environment is to go vegan. Number one, what would you do for love of your planet? Would you go electric to stop the fumes? Plant a tree to breathe for posterity? Not dump plastics and poisons in the sea. Recycling is a given, I assume. Though in the secrecy of your hotel room, do you abandon towels with selfish glee? Reusable mug for coffee or tea? Saving air miles with our new friend Zoom? But do you buy British for Sunday's veg? Ditch the roast to stop Armageddon? Could you forgo fried or fertilized egg for the next generation go vegan? A step too far or the ultimate gain, less death and butchery and much less pain. Two, what difference can you make? Every day that you're a vegan saves the obvious one animal's life, a sentient state with the butcher's knife, another carcass not in the grave. 6k round trip for diseased water braved, 20 litres daily wets a cow's life, 15k to produce a kilo of beef would quench the thirst of what many crave. 30 square feet of forest ancient seat, 20 pounds less farted emissions. A group one carcinogen processed meat with fags, booze and asbestos provisions. One bacon sandwich, you know the answer, fifth higher chance of colorectal cancer. And there's a couple of epigraphs for the third one. Researchers in Canada have found men suffering from masculinity stress are more likely to try and augment their masculinity by eating red meat which is generally perceived as more masculine. A large study showed that vegan men have 13% higher testosterone levels than omnivorous ones. From a hormonal perspective, vegan men are the manliest on earth. Three, macho meat market, real men go vegan. Macho status for kicking a downed cow, boosting masculinity, eating steak. Tears for a snatched son who won't get his milk. Blunt force trauma means he'll go without. Dinner's alpha role displayed when you chow down, proving dominance with knife and fork. With bravery of a gun, did you stalk leather jacket and boots in Camden Town? The roarer the rump, the louder you roar, with one in the eye for a bruised ego. Even playing fields, a different score. Top of the food chain has no credo. Vegans derided, effeminate, gay, eating sausage and amusing display. Uh, epigraph. In the US, the FDA allows 750 million pus cells in every litre of milk. In Europe, regulators allow 400 million pus cells per litre. In Australia, there is no limit on how much pus is allowable. Four, a pint a day doesn't keep the doctor away. White moustaches carry health warnings now. For a mother to drink another's milk, excess oestrogen has breast cancer links. What's in your pure white pint for the cash cow? 
acceptable levels of pus are how you consume your daily shake. A little poo and mastitis will make you think twice about chocolate brown. We shudder in disgust at a child too old to suckle at his mother's breast. Whilst grown-ups take tea from the teat, it's true. Normalised, pasteurised incest. Sons of the semen gun become veal, so mums can lactate to embellish your meal. Final epigraph. If all existing cropland devoted to animal feed and biofuels were converted to crops meant for direct human consumption, we'd be able to grow food for an extra 4 billion people. Five, how to feed 3 billion extra people without trashing the planet. By 2050, nearly 10 billion hungry human mouths to feed or starve. While killing animals, we have the nerve to be considered civilians. Indigenous land theft by Brazilians to produce more animal feed. Observe malnourished neighbours watching greed. Deserve more than half of what's left of crop calories. As China and India get richer, fatedly so does their diet of more meat. A hundred calories of grain for dinner to produce three calories of flesh. Mother, give us this day our daily bread. Or choose who gets beefcake and who is dead. Ooh. Strong. That was an epic. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot in there. I yeah. feel like... You're not pulling your punches. In there, it's not no. very subtle. No, <laughs> Thank you. no, no, but, Chris. but what, how, how else can you, you know, you're saying how it needs to be said. I did find myself just wincing at the pus count. <laughs> Oh God! Oh, thinking about that on my music tomorrow. Um, <laughs> making me think. It's making me think. It absolutely. There's so much in there, like so many, so much information, and really well presented and told. And it's it's one of those ones that really does, yeah, push all the buttons, but in a way that actually makes us think about stuff. So that's a real that's a real achievement to be able to do that. So yeah, mm -hmm. kudos, and in, Kath. and in sonnet form, is no and in small, sonnet form, no small feet. <laughs> That's more than I could do. If it wasn't yeah. hard enough already. Yes, yes. So yeah, huge achievement. Well done, Kath. Um, Thank you. So you read all your. You've got many, many comments. So please read and enjoy those. But also, before you do read and enjoy those, you have to tell us who you want to go next. I'm happy to put uh, the list up um, so um, you can see where we're Gail, at. Gail Webb has she been? Gail. No, no, she hasn't. Yeah. Let me just remove your spotlight. So Gail, I want you to wave at me so I can see you. Where are Hi. Hi, Gail. I'm going to put you on. How are you? Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing great. What a fantastic evening. It's just wonderful listening to everyone's work. Really completely, good. Completely. And tell us about your spark. Uh, my spark comes from some work that um, somebody from the University of Nottingham, which is where I live, is doing, uh, Dr. Alexandra Burgess which is work around plant architecture, intercropping and agroforestry. So she's looking at how uh, plants can, how they harvest the light and how that could work better if there was um, different farming methods, basically, so that it can cope with climate change and there'd be less, um, there'd be more food security for everyone. Um, so it's really important work. Um, I did invite her, but she's actually presented a paper at a conference today, so she was unable to come, but has been very supportive, so that's good. Um, so it's called Harvesting the Light. Plants. I know about these. They grow in my garden, in planters, on city streets, sneak into verges, never discreet. They thrust and sow through cracks in pavements or around the front door, wherever we go, they grow. Remember school, we plant seeds, one each in a paper cup, press in with a finger into damp earth where nature lingers. Watch it reach for the bright touch of sun's honey drips, some water, some time. Shoots peek out thirsty for light. We cultivate tomatoes, herbs on a windowsill. We try to connect with the food sources, 
see magic before our eyes. Nature's forces form leaves, buds glow, flourish into the next spring. We wait for a taste of summer, crops sing as they grow, they grow. In patterns, plants reveal mysteries, capillaries pump in life, sinews stretch towards sun. Blackberries ripen on vines, ducking heads in broadleaf shade. Apple trees live side by side with wheat crops nodding in fields, ready to feed us. The future is made. We dash from work to home, want new growth, new ways, aware of struggles to feed families. Earth still warms up by degrees. Heats farms, factories. Food in forests is what we need. Almonds, apricots, cherries, let's get them on our plates. Farmers, governments unite with scientists. Plants, they turn to us now. Will we allow them room to spread, to photosynthesize, to arch upwards, to rise like a cathedral roof towards skies? Is there a plan mapped out in their veins to reverse effects of climate change? Something clever, seasonal, waterproof. Plants are their own design formed in wind by wavelengths, red, blue, green, into curly, upright, varied shapes between canopies which absorb pollution. They coexist with trees, multiply fruit, cereals, vegetables, all we need. At last, a peaceful revolution. Thank you. Yay! Woo! What a lovely poem! Oh, there was there was so many much beautiful imagery in that poem, and it was it was so yeah, it was so hopeful and inspiring. Yeah, I was into really that. Was, really was. I was there. I was there with the plants. I was willing them on. I was <laughs> cheering, cheering them as they. <laughs> As they popped up, and that thing about the, what was the wavelengths line? That was a lovely one. Yeah, that is a quote from one of the scientific articles I read. Actually, the um, the, the specific colours of wavelengths. I don't actually understand it, but <laughs> it's a good line of poetry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, grab it, use it. But it's 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 really arresting, um, and I think that's what we're trying to do is sort of trying to weave the science and the poetry, and and again connect us. With the feeling of it you do that wonderfully thank you oh, Gail. Thank you. yeah really well written gail and um such a positive kind of looking forward sort of poem so you before you mute you have to pick a pick who goes next i'm oh, yeah. happy um, to put sorry. no no don't apologize i'll um, i'll pick michael sims please michael sims thank you gail michael wave at me so i can see you ah there you are michael I oh, want to say, you. how are you, Michael? I'm very well, thank you, Liv. Um, Good. And uh, I've been very much inspired by the project. And my uh, inspiration was the magical mosslands of uh, Lancashire, which with blanket bogs and fenlands can powerfully combat climate change. And, uh, and I was inspired by the work of the... Uh, the, the Wildlife Trust for Lancashire, Manchester and North Merseyside and Jenny Bennion, one of their, their communication officer who uh, has been very helpful to me in with the feedback she's given me. And I didn't think to ask her to, tonight and I wish I had, but um, uh, so this is, uh, the, the poem is called Mosslands, the lowland raised bogs of Lancashire. And there are just two uh, uh, notes, uh, a balm cake, is a soft, round, flattish bread roll uh, from Northwest England. And night soil is a euphemism for human excrement, which was collected by night soil men before homes had flushing lavatories and it was used as fertilizer. There once, sorry, there were once glacial lakes in forests 
that glinted like eyes. Glistening green carpets of sphagnum mosses arrived and gorged on water and atmospheric carbon. Pickled in its soggy bed, dead moss compacted into peat. Mosslands like giant balm cakes rose up over land the size of 6,000 football pitches. They sucked carbon and rain down into Pete's magic store for buried butter and bog water carried by Vikings to Crosby stayed sweet. Bog bodies kept muscle, hair, skin and nails and moss dressing healed untold war wounds. But when industry bloomed, Mosslands became wilds to be tamed. Men cut chat moss in two for the iron road to Manchester. They dug ditches to sap their life water, shoveled out peat for fuel and tipped in night soil to fertilize their crops. Parched peat leached carbon into water and air. Most moss lands vanished, except in name. But virtuosos are reviving those carbon sinks. To raise the water table, they're clearing brush, blocking ditches, and building dams and dikes. They're sowing moss and other peatland plants in the saturated soil. And the bogs are waking up. A common lizard stirs from its slumber and basks on a spongy carpet in the sun. A round-leaved sundew traps, wraps and eats its lunch. A yellow bog asphodel flaunts its red fruits. A Manchester Argus butterfly sips nectar from cross-leaved heath. Once again, mosslands are working their magic. Yay! Thank you. Thank you. Well Thank you. Wonderful. Wow. Right. I love how um I love how you take us into into the bog uh and yet pull in vikings and that yeah i was really really <laughs> resonated about their kind of the, the bog bodies and how they just hold all that in and yet and then that lovely line about the 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 trains the, the what do you call it the metal road yes um so i'm assuming that was train track the iron it? road yes the iron road yeah um and all this industry sort of coming up around it. And I loved where you left it with the butterfly and the lizard. And there was just, the, after all that kind of huge historical mulchy industrial and you left us with, with the nature, which was a really lovely note. Yeah. Oh, such good use of the macrocosm and the microcosm. Uh, yeah, bringing Thank us you. right down and um, mm. so well performed. I was like, you need oh. to. I felt like there needed to be an animation of the poem so we could see it all forming and growing and broad. And then you'd be doing the voiceover, obviously, as it happened. Because oh, yeah, it was. And Mike, Michael, I just I don't know if you were aware, but Jay was uh, really, really Jay enjoying was... the balm cake references. So, <laughs> you, you, Lovely. You had... Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you were getting some serious yeah thumbs up of approval lovely uh -huh. <laughs> uh, uh, i wanted to i wanted to give it a, a lancashire flavor and um but um so thank you very much and i i, I feel I, marvelous it's been tremendous enjoying this uh, project and um so i think now it's my job to um i think i'll nominate alison now to follow me alison wave at me alison Ah, Alison, yes, with the with the uh, I think it's a lute behind you. 
um, some sort of instrument. <laughs> some kind of instrument that I've always wondered about. How, how are you this evening, Alison? Are you enjoying I'm it? I'm good. Thoroughly enjoying all the poetry. It's been incredible, hasn't it? So what tell us about your spark, Alison? Well, my spark came in the first week of our Hot Poets workshops when I read an extraordinary article um, by a scientist called Arthur Turrell, who is an expert on nuclear fusion and um, plasma. I love and that he, you have a prop. <laughs> I bought it so it could keep me company. And um, I believe that Arthur Turrell is out there in the audience tonight. So thank you very much, Arthur. He's, he's made, he's written books on the subject and he's also made an amazing video all about nuclear fusion and how it works. So I took that as my starting point and then I did some research into the other side of the argument. And this is my poem. It's called Nuclear Fusion Wants to Be Your Friend. First, it's not about making bombs. That's nuclear fission, a long list of losses tolls like a bell, a roll of honor, a memorial, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, Chernobyl, Fukushima, radioactive dragons waiting in caverns underground to devour our children's children's children. That's not the fusion future. There's no hitting or splitting the atom, no nuclear boom. They just get the atoms in the same room. Inside the tokamak, like a boiling cauldron wrapped in invisible ropes, electromagnetic magic forces the atoms to get together, to talk to each other, join hands, Tritium, meet deuterium. They dive into the plasma and squeeze until they fuse. Protons, electrons, neutrons, swimming in the plasma pool, 150 million degrees Celsius, smashing it. For five seconds, they are sun gods basking in success. Millions of years of new clean energy stretch out across the glittering universe. Enough for everyone. But in the afterglow, doubts settle like dust. Tritium needs lithium extracted from the patchwork quilt of gold and turquoise fields in Chile, Bolivia, Argentina. A monster drinking 500,000 gallons per tonne of water, lucrative only for some. I hear a siren song lamenting where the money went we could have spent on natural power now. Her salty tears, counting the years we have to wait, too long, too late. Swim back to shore, don't listen to her anymore. We have a chance to learn from the stars, stealing the sun's magic formula to make 10,000 times more power for our world. As the heavens open, reach up and seize that hope. Perhaps we can make a thousand kettles boil without using any gas or oil. Yeah. Well, unmute yourselves. So you, you, I don't, you have to read the comments. You have to read the comments, Alison. Like there is so much love for for that poem. Um, you smashed it. Yeah, and the only poet to bring a plasma ball prop as well. Um, well, it's just it's 
I mean, I, I, I love that poem. I've heard it a couple of times in the workshops and uh, someone's just put, uh, Misha just put so uh, informative and the imagery was gorgeous and radioactive dragons. And that's, I think you grasped the, the whole thing in terms of really getting the science, really explaining it without feeling like you're whacking us over the head with it because the poetry is, is just wonderful. And there's, oh. it's, it's, yeah. It's you explosive. played that line that yeah. we t- I remember talking to you at the very beginning, like you have to mention the other side of nuclear and uh, because it's, then it becomes the elephant in the room if you don't. And you, and you, the, the beginning is so well written and it's, yeah. And the whole thing is so well written. You, you, you've you done an exceptionally good job and you've kind of made it look easy when it really, really isn't. You've, you've got, had lots of, lots of difficult things to play with. So just, Huge, well done, Alison. Like, hats off. Yeah. That yeah. is a, a very much. really what a great writer you are. I hope you feel and uh, and it's so lovely that you're, you've got the scientists in in um in Arthur here. said it was really fantastic, Alison. Arthur says it's fantastic. <laughs> he knows what he's talking about. Yeah, um, really cracking, really cracking. And thank you, Arthur. Thank you so much, Arthur, for contributing and and for coming to listen. That means a, a huge amount really appreciate that completely so we've only got four poets left for this evening mm-hmm. so Alison who are you going to pick next I can put them um, in the I think I'll go back to the top and go to David Thompson David Thompson let me wave at me down I can see you David yeah um hello David oh, we can't hear you oh yes go for it now just unmuting. <clears throat> How are you this evening? Are you enjoying the poetry? Marvellous, isn't it? It's great. In fact, I'm completely overawed. <laughs> well, I don't think you should be. I think you should tell us what your spark is, because um, I think it's a really interesting one. It still says uh, unmute. Oh, we can hear you. You can. Yeah, Good. Yeah. So, my spark was um, <clears throat> hearing about a, a relay run from uh, Glasgow to Sharm el Sheikh in Egypt, which is going to happen in August 2022. And it's going to carry a message from COP26 to COP27. And the distance is quite arduous. In fact, it's about 6,500 kilometers going through 18 countries. So it's going to be very interesting. Uh, A huge effort involving hundreds of people. And uh, I look forward to lots of publicity for new information on climate change and mitigation, adaptation, and even reversal. So that's it. Is this, is this the moment to start reading? I reckon it is. Okay, I'll, I'll give it a try. Brilliant. <clears throat> it's a long, hard, dusty road from Glasgow to Sharm el Sheikh, a trail spanning 18 flags, a chain of stages, countless pounding strides to drive home the climate crisis message. We're running out of time. Shall we run together? Work to convince, engage, believe, and stoke the media fire. Along the way, ignite the energy of a thousand schools, draw hope from science and the spark of new solutions. The relay batons a smart messenger a high-tech capsule, more than a symbol, an icon of urgency from human hand to hand, country to country. Its message from tomorrow's leaders to today's, act together, use your power, reset priorities, think future, reach higher, Keep Earth alive. 
The target's vast, and yet it's nothing. Net zero, now or never. Quick, we're running out of time. Ah, oh, it's really moving, David. It's really powerful. Yeah. It's really simple and clear and driving and urgent and every line lands like a like a call um and we're with you on the journey and i really love the kind of what it represents uh i love that beginning about the 18 flags uh that was such a lovely way to to paint that journey um yeah thank you really moving uh, I got to read it last time or hear it last time and I was really moved by by it. and just the sense of I can feel all those children running and passing on the baton and passing on the metaphorical baton to each other to us and pa hopefully passing it on to the leaders and it really comes across it's a really strong you know metaphorical and literal kind of combination and yeah it's just such a good job David. Thank you. Um, so I will move you from the spotlight to um. So David, what I'm going to say is we've got three people left, but I, I be, I'm going to I'm going to ask if it would be okay if Becky goes last. Sorry, Becky, that's the price you pay for for stalling your thing. Because so could you could you pick between Paul and Mike? Exclamation mark! Exclamation mark! Exclamation mark! Well, I've had the pleasure of hearing Paul's uh, poem at an early stage. I'd love to hear it now. <sighs> Well, then your wish shall be granted. Paul, wave. I can see you, Paul. I can see you. Um, I also have had the pleasure of hearing Paul's poem. And I'm very excited to hear it again. How are you, Paul, this evening? I'm well, thank you very much. Yes. Um, it's been, a, you know, as, as many people have said, it's been a great project to be involved in. Um, and um, I really have felt honoured to be in this company and seeing everybody's um, polished performances tonight and what they've managed to do. And I think um, if um, uh, people's journeys have been the same as, as, as mine, it's, uh, it's been an incredible one. Um, so certainly um, highs and lows, but, um, you know, um, finishing well by, by the evidence of tonight. So tell us what your spark was. We all wish to yeah. know. So my spark was um, a project called Clean Ocean Sailing, um, and I uh, this is a project that was led by um, uh, a guy called Steve Green, who I met actually at a poetry, a book launch um, for a, of a friend of mine, um, and I just happened to be at the back of the room, and he was there, and we just got talking, and he described how um, he'd got this project going. And clean ocean sailing is um, uh, this guy and his partner and his uh, their, their little one on um, a boat that goes out and uh, accesses their hard to reach places around the Cornish coast to clean up plastic. Um, and um, so my poem is called Castaway, and it's called Castaway because. Um, it's the, st the story of how the project began, which is um, essentially Steve getting marooned on a, an isle in the Silly Isles um, in a storm. Cast away. Like Jonah, he passes through that unexpected storm and like Jonah's whale, that westerly silly isle, Annette swallows him whole like a delicacy. Her rock belly swells. Three days, three nights, this lone mariner, this lover of the sea, marooned, cocooned, lights, fires kindled by spindrift grass, under clouds loaded with gunshot hail, smoke, drifts to the horizon. He becomes a slow burning sacrifice on her charred granite altar. Starved of distraction, only the company of cairns, there is a breaking and repentance known solely by those in isolation. 
in the night under Polaris, constant as a lover's gaze, his heart rises, falls, swims with a curdled tide. A castaway amongst the castaway. He explores her wild beauty, adorned by pearl necklaces of boys, fishing nets, lacing her curves and contours, wind sculptured cheeks brushed with glitter reflecting starlight. The plastosphere is here, not confined to the slow vortex of a Pacific gyre fed by junk from boats in South China seas and Caribbean cruises, outpouring some Buenos Aires to Bristol or the secretions of the Mississippi and the Tamar but rather a flotilla of candy crush rafts leading a tiny invasion, a colonization, a collision of bacterial cultures transported under jet streams, carrying carcasses of gull, seal, and grinning dolphin. That putrefying mash pulsing heavily on each jewel encrusted wave that lap her beaches. In her womb, besieged by undigested flotsam, there is a rebirth. On the third day, he leaves, threading his kayak through rocks that jut like blackened teeth, laden under sacks of freed up plastic, now a burden that will never ease. And in his mind's eye, he sees sands of hard to reach coves, sees a new life among a sifting and shifting community, clean ocean sailing, carbonless, upon the water, harvesting bottles, containers whose content spilled decades ago or yesterday, gleaning sequins, rainbow colored shards, a million miniature mirrors reflecting a civilization fragmented, broken, rinsed out and washed up on Cornish shores. But the unspoiled is worth chasing. Oh, what a journey, what a journey in a poem. I mean, how stunning is that writing? Paul, what an amazing job you've done. Um, what do you reckon, Chris? Well, I, I love, I loved a, a lot about it, but I, because I heard this a few weeks ago and, and I think, you know, you were still kind of wrestling with the, the whole shape of it. And um, I feel like you've done it. You know, you've, 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 the fact that like the way out wasn't as clear as it perhaps f felt this time. But, but I just love the twist because you took us into this amazing desert island and then you kind of wrapped it like, you know, I was sort of in awe of it. But the way you sort of just slowly reveal what it is wrapped in is, is like really creepy because i'm i'm so i'm really enjoy i'm enamored with the imagery and then i'm sort of sickened when i gradually realize what i'm being shown and i think to to write something that uh that affects that kind of internal change in such a physical way is really really impressive it's really interesting uh and unpleasant thank you <laughs> 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 such such, a, such a, a, an amazing poem and we've kind of re we're kind of reaching the penultimate and and mike i think i have found your last name for some reason you got taken off the excel spreadsheet with the how how dare is it brigden is it brigden mike it's not the first time oh i know i know i think you've been <laughs> sacrificed in the in the in the admin vortex but you you haven't because you've survived you swum up to the surface so is it is it is it mike brigden that is your no, uh, no that's somebody else <laughs> what's your surname mike well call me michael because it's hunter uh oh got you I've, that, there were so many Michaels in this project. It's quite, um, but only one Michael Hunter. Michael Hunter, tell us what. Um, how are you first, and what was your spark? I'm all right. I've um, I literally got back. I was a bit flustered because I literally got back like two minutes after you started from a little trip down south. So um, someone might be interested to know that I've been in London with one of the uh, co-founders of a, a small group called iShine. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> oh really? Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, I went out for a 
for a curry and a bit of poetry with Tiu and uh, my daughter. Because we, oh, well. uh, we, we were we were on our family went on one of the original um, events back in the uh, oh, wow. late two uh, thousands, wasn't it? About two thousand and seven, two thousand and eight. I need to hear this story, but can, not now. Not now. <laughs> yeah. park it, but I genuinely really, really want to hear that because I had no idea. I would have loved to have known that before, but um, I know it now. So that's one. Well, I only just found out at the weekend that you two are best buddies. So that's yeah, one of those small world things. Oh, amazing. Anyway. <gasps> Tell us about your spark and you can confer later yeah. with Chris. Yeah. So um, following on from Paul's really. Um, my spark is the Two Minute Foundation, uh, which is founded by a surfer dude who's also the camper van cookbook man, and he does a few other things. I think he's a counsellor down in Bude as well now. Um, and what they, what he did was um, he, as a surfer, he found that the beaches are just flooded with plastic and waste, and thought he'd do something about it. So he. Um, started encouraging people just to spend two minutes every time they visited the beach just to clean up a bit and then that spread into sort of discouraging plastic use um, cleaning up towns and cities if you're not at the beach as well because all that adds to landfill and gets into our drains and gets to the beach um, so yeah and I ran it by him the other week as well um, and the only thing that he, he, he liked it and the only thing he wanted to change was he wanted to depersonalize it and take his name out of it because very modestly he said you know he's just a he's just a surfer who came up with an idea that anyone else could come up with and he didn't want his name on it so so I've changed one of the verses but other than that I think we're probably ready aren't we definitely go for it okay it's called uh, two minutes to midnight what if I told you that you have two minutes. You only have two minutes, and if I told you your beautiful life will end in exactly 120 seconds. If I told you that in these two minutes, you could save the world. Right here, right now, but there's no waiting, no excuses, no sorries, no maybes, no ifs, no buts, no pardons and no hesitating. And if I told you these two short minutes are actually the most beautiful gift you will ever receive, what would you do? Would you hold your loved ones close or closer? Say and hear, I love you one last time. But what if I told you it may be too late because you know, your family, your kids, they're not here. And all the hugs, the kisses, the kind words that won't save them anyway. It's nearly too late. So I'm going to tell you a story. I doubt that you're sitting comfortably now, but we're running out of time. So I'll begin. Scroll down. One surfer searched the seven seas, but instead of breaks arising, found waves of plastic to his knees and thought, our oceans need reviving. With local children, mums and dads, we'll clear the junk and grime. We'll pick up butts and plastic bags, two minutes at a time. Let's clean up every neighborhood because plastic in our seas ain't good. Marine life can't digest this food. We hope by now that's understood. Two minutes, all we ask of you to start to fix this mess. Stop tidal waves of single use and washed up fishing nets. And if you can't get to a beach, look round your towns instead. Two minutes cleaning up your streets will halt the litter's spread. Two minutes, think about your waste, refuse, recycle and replace our plastic use our shared disgrace two minute cleans in every space but sadly this isn't a fairy story i'm not cinderella and you're not prince charming 
but that doomsday clock is ticking and we all need to understand now it's 100 seconds to midnight so if we want a happy ending we better work fast and we better start now two minutes at a time thank you Oh. Oh. oh, I loved it. Thank you very much, Mike. Well done, Mike. That was very powerful. That took me to some places emotionally, definitely, which um, I'm sure was the intention. Um, yeah, yeah, Re really, really strong work. Very, very, um, yeah, I, I, I kind of don't want to be left in the doom place. Um, and it is that urgency that, that you definitely brought home. And it was really great to hear also about the work of the surfer. Yeah. I, I, I really enjoyed the switch of uh, tone and rhythm when you started talking about the cleanup and we, mm. go, in, we go into the rhyme and we find the kind of, there's, there's a different pattern and if, if there's an uplift to that mm -hmm. kind of, you know, uh, it, feel, it feels kind of cyclical and we, we start to kind of have a different movement and it's really interesting the, just those choices how, how, how those uh, how those messages land just in the different ways that we write thank you yeah thank you everyone yeah thank, thank you, you. Yeah, no, thank you, Mike. And you've been on a massive journey with this and have changed your subject sort of at least once, um, haven't you? So, got yeah. Got the Olympics. <laughs> yeah, um, well, I'll never forget. Another time. You know, save those <laughs> slip Olympics, keep them in your back pocket uh, whilst, you know, but maybe sort of insulate your back yeah. pocket. Um, uh, <laughs> very powerful penultimate poem, really. Uh, let's sit, let Becky, Becky, we kept you to the very end. Um, I'm going to put you at spotlight, you. Did your friend arrive? No. Oh. Ah. 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 <laughs> How very dare they. It's okay, because uh, one of my brothers is here, and that's great. Oh, that's lovely. And have you had a good evening? You're the final poet for this evening, so... Um... Yeah, it's, it's been amazing. So amazing. I'm really in awe of uh, all the poets. Yeah, such quality of work. Yeah, brilliant. Mm -hmm. Um, I was laughing that Chris, um, some not you, Chris, another Chris had said that he, he was enjoying it so much he had to take his phone into the toilet um, because he didn't want to miss anything because um, it's been such a, a strong night. Um, so, Becky, I was I was quite into having you finish the night. So can you tell us what your spark was? Is Well, I started being interested in mycelium and mycorrhizal fungi and I started doing some research and I came across this guy called Andy Adamatsky, who's professor of unconventional computing at UWE in my hometown of Bristol. And I thought unconventional computing, this is right up my alley. Uh, and he, he's been doing work with making computers out of slime molds and he's been, uh, and fungal architecture. So uh, I, yeah, I just knew that I had to do something about this. Did you this meet him? Did you meet? No, he's kind of a bit of an enigma. He said he's communicated he over email. I kind of wonder if he's actually artificial intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, but we've emailed quite a lot and he's sent me communicate in sort of sensory pulses. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just comes along, like, gives me a little massage. Every once <laughs> well, uh, well, yeah, let's hear, let's hear the poem as, 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 through that's been transmitted to you through his spores. Alrighty. <laughs> I am dreaming of sipping tea in 2053. Dirt under my fingernails from digging in the musty, shroomy earth, nutritious, leafy loam. Rain pitters on the window, and my sensory home knows, warms up just a little, dims the light down as I doze. This building has mycelium ceilings, tiny interwoven filaments, fungal threads that twine in tree roots and through my mushroom walls. Mycelium is free and shoots up fast. This house was bloomed in just two weeks, grown in a single monolithic piece from fungi bound on frames of wasted cellulose, discarded food, biomass, banana skins, coffee grounds, orange peel, 
and other stuff too tough to eat. My clean home breathes, body warm, and nestles in within the trees, smells of creamy stroganoff. I breathe it in deliciously. Nearly sentient, this wall can feel my touch when I lean my palm upon its velvet skin. On the edge of thinking, my unconventional shroom computer, not quite conscious, makes smart decisions. Senses when my hormones are out of whack or I'm full of stress, filters air, nourishes, adjusts my meds. We can quickly grow more homes, sustainable, living, suedey rooms that gently biodegrade. No chems, no trails, just slip away, decompose beneath our feet when the need has gone. Outside, wild boars forage at the tree roots for truffles, which are talking to their mycorrhizal cousins. My home is grown on mounds of yesterday's land, filling our futures with soft edged places, symbiotic relationships within these mycelium walls. Oh, what a beautiful Ooh. ending to a beautiful night, Becky. <laughs> Such rich, stroganoffy language. <laughs> there, there's somewhere out there, there has to be a band that makes a song called These Mycelium Walls. <laughs> Just has to be. That is glorious, and I am utterly baffled and fascinated, and now have to just go and read and find out what on earth this is all about because it's, yeah. it's quite bonkers, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah, really bonkers. <laughs> two uh, weeks. So is that is that really two weeks? Might be a, a futuristic guess. A stretch, right? Okay. <laughs> Um, but I was there. I was within it. I was within inside your poems, feeling it, smelling it, touching it. It's such a yeah, such a sensory, sensory, beautiful, optimistic poem. Um, yeah, well done, Becky. Stroganoffy. Very stroganoffy. Yeah. Very <laughs> stroganoffy. And just well, what an amazing evening. I, yeah. yeah. And uh, I, wow. yeah, it's so personally, it's so. Yeah, it, to see the process you've all been on and to see what you've come up with is is so yeah inspiring and I'm so proud of the whole process and you guys and I know how much you've all worked and it's been a really it's you've you've earned every one of those poems has been earned by so much research and hard work and so much oh how do I make a poem out of these facts and how do I make fa facts out of this poem and you know I know I know it's been a, a real struggle and you've all done such an incredible job so can can we just like like, um, let's just give everyone a round of applause. Can you just unmute yourselves if you can? Or just like... <laughs> yeah. Just... I mean, I, my mind's fizzing. <laughs> my mind's fizzing, really, with so many fascinating, new-to-me bits of research that are kind of held lightly in these like really playful beautiful deep exploratory poems and i'm sort of i'm fizzing a little bit at the at the prospect of what happens when we create these sort of bubbles of hope and curiosity uh as a sort of act of i don't know yeah hope and rebellion against the bloody doom and this is exactly i feel it i feel it so strongly from having listened to all these poems and i'm just hugely grateful to uh to be able to sit and listen to it for all this time so thank you thank you for for giving that to to me that's my own personal <laughs> selfish kind of you know i got a huge amount from just sitting and yeah what a journey what a journey um yeah big up yourselves yeah and and this is we this is only half of the what has been created because we're having another sharing on wednesday which you're all invited to if you can make it um where the other half of the group 
will be sharing their their poems as well. And that also for any of you who had guests tonight who couldn't make it, there was going to be a book. There's going to once the book's made, we'll do we'll we're going to do like um a book launch event, so that you can still yeah. have time to invite people to the and and give them books or, or get them to buy your amazing books. But what a collection! Uh, I think we've made some amazing art here together and just to, to witness it has been a real privilege. Really, um, really cool. So, yeah. So is, is that about it for this evening, Chris? I think, I think it would be great if you guys who have written the poems could hang around for five minutes so we can have a quick sign off and what next. Um, but for all of you who have so generously come and supported and cheered and appreciated this wonderful work, um, thank you. Uh, it is now time for you to slip off quietly around the back of the internet and make yourself a cup of tea or a gin and tonic. Um, and, and yeah, please do tell people about. Yeah. What you've Any heard. last comments? Oh, please put them in the chat. I will try and I'll try and save the chat and read it. So. Um, thank you. Bye. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank, thank you. you Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank, Thank you, Divya. You. Thank you for your <laughs> tiny forest uh, the collaboration. Uh, Thank you, everybody. Oh, Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Fantastic evening. Oh, Thank, Thank you, you Alison. And feel free to, I should have said this earlier, but to join the Hot Poets mailing list for more information. We should have said about curses about that show in London, Chris. Oh, uh, yes. The show. <laughs> we'll say it to you guys. It's the Hot Poets finale of this stage of Hot Poets, which is going to be in the South Bank on the 22nd of April. If you want to have a massively exciting night out in London, come to the South Bank. We've got, I think, 11 of the 12 Hot Poets performing and the two, comp two of the competition winners, which include Harula. Um, so um, we'll be performing with the Tung Fu Band at the South Bank on the 22nd of April. You are so welcome. What a night. What about being part of that? Come to that. Um, and Alison, your 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 boy will be playing keys. So uh, yeah. Um, uh, so let's should we just wrap it up, live yeah, with yeah. with um, a, a, a what next? Uh, and it'd be like let's finish it properly by kind of uh, doing the the full appreciative uh, noises with our faces. But before that, some practicals. Yeah, practicals. practicals. So just to say, I, I think we should go around really quickly and just have like one, a couple of words from each of you. But just to say, yeah, huge congratulations. And the practicals are by the 10th of April, it would be great to have as polished a version as possible as your of your poem sent to me in a Word document. So and please get somebody to read it through and sort of check it for spelling and grammar. If you can, we will be editing them a bit. So if you send those through to me by the 10th of April, um, we will also send you a little form, like an online form, like a valuation form to fill in. Uh, unless you, you know, I know that they're a bit boring, but we'll try and keep it short and exciting. But your book doesn't, your poem doesn't end up in the book unless you do the evaluation form. Okay, <laughs> that's the uh, <laughs> that's the exchange we're asking for, just so we can tell the arts council that their, um, you know, that their investment was well spent. But um, but uh, yeah. Also, if you have, um, if through this process you have, I know we've done, you know, a couple of like short form haiku type exercises. If you have generated anything short, and we are talking short, um, that you would like to chuck into the mix, because um, we will have 40 odd really, really strong poems. They're all quite long. So as a book, it's quite nice to... Um, mix things up a little bit and have one or two little little short pieces as punctuation so if you've got anything that's come out of this process um but literally no more than eight lines please um ha oh, a haiku yeah haiku send a, ha would be, a haiku is haiku great would be perfect um then please do send them through don't feel like you have to write anything especially for that but it's just if you've got it in your notebook and it's came out of this process um that would be lush yeah. can't promise that it'll end up in the book but it's nice to have it as an option so we we want your poem we want a couple of lines about what you know try and keep it as concise as possible about your spark really no more than a couple of you know a little top you know a little bit at the top so what your idea was basically and then any thank yous you know and make sure you spell their names right because i'm not going to check them so um so thank yous and and the spark and your poem and then if you have a little haiku or a little eight line or less poem to send as well. 
and that's by the 10th of April. What I'll do is I will put them all into a book with design, then me and Chris will read through them. We might do a little bit of tweaking here and there. Then we will send them back to you. I will send you back a PDF of how your poem will look and, you know, and then, and so you can sign it off so you can see it before it goes off. Um, and yeah, that's kind of the process. And then I will contact you again to say, we well, are books coming out, it's being printed. How many copies do you want? You get a copy free each and then you will get discounted copies that you can have to sell on. Um, and you can tell me how many you want so I know how many to get ordered. Um, so, and then we will have a, a big book uh, launch session online when the book is out. So you can all come and wave your books and we will have a big celebration of, of, of the, some of the poems in the book. So that's the plan. Um, Michael, are notes okay? What do you mean? Um, I uh, I wondered whether whether it's okay to just put in little footnotes about what words mean, like I did tonight. I explained what various terms meant. Is that okay? If you have to. <laughs> if I have to. Yes, I say that as somebody who, who is typesetting it, so I'm just trying to make my life easier. But yes, as long as everyone doesn't do that, don't give people ideas, Michael. But if you really feel that um, feel that, that is something... That but I just think from, poem from the poems tonight, do you think what I said uh, really needs notes? No. No, right, OK, I won't. That's fine. I That's kind fine. of need David, I, I... Be David Bellamy to read it, though. But I don't, we can't like put that in a in a book. But it, oh, I could really get into him getting into. No, it's brilliant. No, it doesn't need footnotes. Oh, well, no, that's, well that's I think everybody would be able to find out what night soil is, or would know what night soil is. I don't think everybody would know balm. It's true, but if if we apply the same logic to everyone's oh, yeah. poem, then we'd have to like explain every part of every mm. bit of everyone's, wouldn't we? So it would be a bit strange to explain bits of yours and not to do that for other people's that might be equally as require research so i would suggest uh but if you really have if you really really feel that you want to but um i don't think it's necessary a couple of questions a couple of questions in the chat yep. um so harula was saying can you can uh she put the poem online um before we do the book and my i just shot straight from the hip and went no not yet please but um <laughs> i might be wrong um what what are you thinking um yeah, it's a difficult one, isn't it? I, I don't really mind, uh, particularly as long as you say you could say, "This is my poem." Come and see the launch on Wednesday to hear everybody else's. Or if you wanted to do it straight away, uh, it, we don't want everyone to do it because then people won't buy the book. So that's, I guess, yeah. the 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 kind of challenge. I'm really up for all of you though performing them if you're doing any open mic nights or sharing them because I think that's what this should be about, really, mm. getting the poems out there um in in sort of any way I, I don't mind what, that much what might be nice what might be nice because i think i think that's that's it isn't it it's not like anyone's going to be following everyone and collecting no. everyone's <laughs> yeah. like, from online but, and if they but, did good luck to them to be fair yeah. if they, they, you know but but as a you know as a an exercise in not giving the whole game away could could, could you share excerpts with kind of ex excited proclamations of this is coming in a book and that you know yeah. da, da, da. i think yeah it'd be nice if we could hold back a little bit i think but equally i get your point Liv. like it's a nice way of sharing the project and letting people know about it and letting so i might be completely wrong um Oh, let's let's we haven't thought it. about that Haruda we haven't thought about it so no we, we haven't thought about it we haven't discussed and obviously we have different kind of um oh, I'm a terrible one for just sharing everything people say to me you want to share your poems online immediately what, what I haven't found that it's affecting my book sales I think but maybe it has <laughs> maybe maybe I'm totally wrong um but I, I think if everybody shared theirs some people might think well but I don't mind, really. I mean, and Gail is asking, is it okay if we get the poem printed elsewhere in the meantime, i.e., University of Nottingham blog? Yes, I think so. I think I think the point of these poems is to is if the if the University of Nottingham you've worked with them, and I think the partnership with them, I think that's really great. You know, I, I don't think we should hold back. Strike while the iron is hot for things like that. I think while they're interested in it. Um, that would be my instinct. Is that all right, Chris? Yeah, I'm just going to shut up now. Sorry, are we? Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think you're. You're. I think you're probably right. 
I think you're probably right. Yeah, maybe it is just a case of here, I've done a thing. Because it's not like we've all got the same friends and followers and da da da. Um, and I think if it if it broadens people's awareness of the project, brilliant. Um, so yeah, yeah I, t- I I take it back. Share it, Harula. Share it with share pride. It, yeah. Share share it where the moment is right as well, where people are interested in it. And then, but also say, ah, but the book's coming out. You want to be what? See this book. This is one example of, and or come along to the sharing on Wednesday. And there was like fifty six people all together tonight coming to watch, and I thought that was really impressive. Good for our numbers, Chris. So I kind of made a note of that. But um, yeah. Uh, any more questions? Uh, uh, <laughs> Um, um, oh, oh yes, I've got one just quickly yes. going uh, for, for the publication. Um, I, I have had an offer um, which I'm going to check as well with with the with with Rachel from Tiny House Community because she couldn't uh, be here or for Wednesday. Um, what I, I was uh, asked was, uh, can it go on a council website because um, I've had an offer. They're really keen because of of the message that's. Um, it's about land disposal and it's linking up with council because that's another kind of partner because of the land disposal policies, the newer ones, which are all about letting community led groups get in there and start working the land. So is that get feasible at this point or shall I wait a little longer? Um, so you have a choice. You can wait till it's been like tweaked and just slightly polished if you want to. But, to, you know, again, it's like. Yes, great. Make sure Hot Poets website is mentioned. Make sure Absolutely. You know, Hot Poets is yeah, 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 yeah. But this is what this project is about. So, mm. you know, yeah, but you know, okay. just well, you need a line, don't you, of like this is part of the Hot Poets Participation Sparks project. Absolutely. About science, scientists and organ, you know, climate change yeah. organizations working with poets. But something like that. But um, yeah, I think mm. that's great. I think that's a, that is what I would consider a win, Jane. Uh, yeah, I, I was really, I was really surprised at yeah. the offer. Somebody who yeah. works in the council has said they would like this to be put put out there. Oh, well, that's great! <laughs> okay. That's an achievement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it well is. Done, and I think Jane. you know this is all to do with what I don't know. We really have got this into the cauldron together, haven't we? And it's just been remarkable. Uh, I, I feel re- really, really delighted to have met you all as well, and. And to be part of this, so I feel really honoured and inspired. Yeah. Of course, <laughs> well, you've you've started off our sharing, Jane, perfectly. So let's quickly let's go round. And if anyone has any quick questions, you can ask them when it gets to you. Tim. Let's go to you next. Oh, what am I supposed to be doing? Just say, was... just say how is it? How it's been? Just like a line. We're just doing a sort of share, a sort of a a check out. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was, I was distracted because I was trying to tell you that Alison's been trying to talk to you. I know, um, I know, Alison, so we'll get to you. Or you can be next after Tim, so be ready. That's all uh, right. Yeah, I've had a brilliant time. I've learned so much. Um, and uh, I don't think I've learned a way of writing poems that I'm going to take forward to my, my practice generally. <laughs> but it's been very, very interesting um, growing experience so thank you both so much for it it's been oh. really really helpful I've, really I've enjoyed pleasure. it thanks Tim. I'm I... happy with what I wrote too you so. should be you should be really happy I learned a lot during your poem so um let's hope I think you can do something with that one but let's hold that thought Tim Allison yeah I've got a question, question. yes we send um uh, by email the link to the recording. I've got one or two friends who would like to hear it, but uh, they weren't able to come. Yeah, I will. So I, it's, I just have to wait for it all to upload. It was a yeah. big data file. So I will, um, I will, I'll send everyone a link to the recording so you can all have a choice Thanks. to watch it. I'll send it just to the whole list. Yeah. So. And the other thing is I've already been getting feedback as I'm sure other people have from friends who listened in and they've been commenting on the high quality of the whole uh, the whole workshop and the level of, of quality of the poems. They have loved the whole evening. And so that's really nice to share with everybody. And I wanted to say thanks to you both. Um, I found the thing that astonished me was that working under the pressure of such a short time scale made me focus much more than I usually would to produce something so that was great Alison you did such a good job <laughs> and 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 your son would be very proud I know he loves this project too doesn't he Chris he, he does said, yeah. Yeah. Well, 
it was he who told me about it and encouraged me to sign up. Ah, have you offer. shared have you shared your poem with him? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I hope that he was impressed because he's very impressive. I hope at some point you and Arthur get so Arthur is uh, our regular keys player for Tung Fu, right? Uh, not the plasma scientist. Not no, no not the plasma scientist. But both of them together would be great. What, what I what I hope happens at some point is that you and Arthur get together and you do your poem and he plays some keys along with it. And that, that, that would be the perfect circle for me. Um <laughs> thank you for sharing that feedback. I think I I yeah. Uh, it's really nice to hear that your friends uh, thought what they thought. Becky. And then we'll go Kerry, so you know to... I just had a question pops into my head, actually, is about um, if there's a, a sharing emails or sharing so social media links or something like that. So there's if, yeah, I'd be interested in sort of following people's progress and stuff, maybe. Mm, uh, keeping I, keeping touch with people we i need to send out like a contacts thing don't i for everybody so if i send out everybody's emails and names and then you can cut is that the best way of doing it or is is there is if there, everyone's happy with that in yeah terms that's of, the, uh, yeah it, that, that's kind of that's yeah uh, we need your permission to do that or you could just stick it in the chat and then, then yeah if you're if you're happy for your for your um emails to be shared maybe stick them in the chat now and people can cut it cut you know copy and paste them i've that just been be... cheeky and put my instagram or oh, your instagram you know put me instagram something like in. that but um but thank you becky and you you um, i'm guessing you've had a good time i've had such a good time and, and you know at the beginning i was really scared and didn't think i'd be able to do it i thought it was going to be really difficult i was really daunted when you said go and find a scientist and find a thing i just thought how on earth is it going to happen um, but it's happened and it, that's it's been really satisfying to, to find something to to hook into and to do and then to create a poem it's I found it a real head scratchy process but actually I'm sort of all the more pleased for it having been head scratchy yeah, yeah. that's good yeah completely and yeah just because it's hard it doesn't mean it's not worth it and, and actually because it's hard it makes it more rewarding doesn't it when you get there um Kerry Uh, yeah, I would definitely echo that. I found it um, uh, really, I, I kind of did it because I've always not been very good at science and not got science. And, um, and, uh, and I kind of wanted to challenge myself and it was very challenging. And I know I still chose something that was still about people. Um, Social that science, human science. Of, yeah, my way into it. And I really appreciated everyone else's poems and um i absolutely loved yours alison um oh. i really like i've always gone i don't get it and you just did it you just explained it perfectly so um and yeah yeah so i really appreciate also the the cracking out of me i felt like it the whole process really challenged me on some big points and um thank you Thank you, Liv, for standing your ground on my thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Kerry, I'm not going to let you do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad you didn't, though, but I think, you know, uh, they, they won't know what you're ever going to do. But, um, I, I think it was a better poem for you. To yeah, no, that. no, you're right. You're totally right. Yeah, uh, um, you. uh, it was a fantastic poem. You did a smash. It was a smasher. So well done and performed so well. Um, <laughs> Paul, Paul, Paul. And then we'll go to Jay. If we, we'll just try and be as quick as we can, guys. I know, you know, um, there's a lot of you. Paul. Um, yes, I'm, I'm not sure um, I can add much to what, what I said earlier. Really, um, really hugely enjoyable. Um, I, I haven't traditionally been that good at writing to a brief um my my poems have kind of ex expanded and gone where they they've gone and so i coming on to this i i've immediately felt the challenge of um writing in a in a more disciplined way i guess um so um it was good it was a really um tough thing at times to really concentrate and think about all the things that um 
uh, needed to be in there. Um, so so that that was good. And uh, you know, I, I've, you know, four weeks later or maybe five weeks later, I, you know, I'm I, I'm here looking back and thinking that was that was a really good thing to do, and I've really enjoyed being being part of it. So um, and also I did share this with um, Steve. Um, who's part of the ocean uh, who, who leads this project um, and uh, there's an extra connection now there's an extra connection um, because because of that and um, uh, and that was a, a nervous moment when I shared that with him because I really didn't know how he was going to going to receive it and um but it turned out a really precious one. So um, that was just a real extra bonus for me um, that, um, you know, he, he turned around and he's a sailor guy and he's, you know, he's very masculine. And he said, you know, you brought tears to my eyes. And I don't think that was necessarily because it was good. It was just that it was his story. Yeah. It was his story yeah. and it was captured. And um, I hadn't really put myself in his shoes. So um, it was. And, um, and it is really good. It is really good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but um, yeah, I wasn't really fishing for compliments there, actually. But, uh, you know, I think um, it was just a moment between us. Um, and um, uh, you answered a question, actually, because he immediately wanted to share it. And he's going to put it on his website eventually. So I think he could probably do that sooner rather yeah. than later. Yeah, and um, send us links. Really That's what would be lovely. If, if it does go on to these places, please send us links and show us where it's been. Yeah. And that would be really yeah. good. Um, but that's it. We're giving voice to people's lives and their experiences and the things they're fighting for that they maybe find it hard to communicate. And that's so powerful. Mm. Uh, you know, that, that's we found that with the first phase of Hot Poets, what it did for the internal PR in, in organisations who had poems written about all their work. It's mm. massive. It's, I don't think is... we had fully appreciated what that impact might be, actually, um, on the people that we were working with and partnering with and just for them to have the importance of their work reflected back at them. I think it, it yeah, it made a really strong connect connection. So it's great to hear that you had that, Paul. Um, yeah. It's great to hear that this project has has had more of those, you know, and is mm. is seeping outwards, and that's just yeah, good work, David. Let's, um, David, running out of time. Muting. Am I unmuted? Yes. Yeah, you yes. are. Yeah. Uh, what is the pub date for the book? Um, I don't know, David. <laughs> um, it depends when it gets. Uh, that's. Um, it will hopefully be May. It, it all depends on on when people get it in. When it, you know, there's a lot of people to factor in. So as soon as it can be, but it will be May. May hopefully towards the end of May, probably. Because it would be obviously nice to be able to give a reference to the book when. Uh putting the poem out somewhere else. You can, it will be out in May. You can say that, but I can't give an exact date because, uh, well, hopefully it'll be out, oh, hopefully. Yeah, it's just- um, yeah, You don't have the, perhaps you don't have the title and- um, Yeah, it'll it be called Hot, po Hot Poet Sparks. Hot Poet Sparks. But um, obviously I've got to gather together like 35 poems and we've got to edit them and put them in a book and send them all back to you and have you all approve them and then get it printed and May's very ambitious that's like an Annika Rice kind of a turnaround to be fair yeah, it so, um, doesn't, doesn't depend only on you no no it, no it doesn't it depends on lots of people which is why I can't be specific sure yeah you didn't say which May live 2029 <laughs> <laughs> maybe <laughs> <laughs> for, for okay may seems very optimistic this is just um i've done one of these before with the project um it is quite a lot of work. that was my siren siren poets and i did a similar thing uh, it just requires quite a lot of, of work but it's not impossible may is quite optimistic so may june it's may slash june let's give myself a little bit of a oxygen it's summer it's summer the, the it's summer, summer. Yeah. it'll be out it'll be out by the it'll be out you know before the days get darker 
<laughs> you can put that on the uh, the announcement but yes um we will we'll, we'll be able to tell you more close close to the time when because we'll arrange a big poetry launch as well so um but yes thank you david um angela or did you have anything else to say david oh not really no okay fabulous angela okay yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, it's been a brilliant night. And uh, yeah, it's just everybody's words are just amazing. You know, it's just like you just feel like a sponge. that's just absorbed all of this. stuff. <laughs> just like, oh, my God. <laughs> um, it's been lovely having you on the project. And it's yeah, thank you for being here and bringing us your solar light um, and on the brownfield sites of our hearts, Angela. But no. Wonderful. I've got the word out to Somerset County Council, and I like everybody. Like I've shared your poem before, and people have had massive response to that. And <laughs> yeah, they love they love me at Somerset County Council. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know, and now they love you, Angela, and you can know how yeah. I feel being loved yeah. by Somerset County Council for your yeah. poetic. Well, they style. are my employer, so I have to love them. Uh, yes, yeah. Well, respect to them. So, um, yes. so. So, so yes, uh, I'm always t yeah extolling the virtues of Somerset. So thank you for your <laughs> hard work, uh, Gail. Hi. Yes. I mean, um, just to say again, it's been fantastic. I really enjoyed working with you all. Uh, as other people have said, quite a challenge. There have been times I've been gnashing my teeth at you know, oh, I've got very long to sort this out. But it has really pushed me to make connections as well with the scientists so that's been fantastic because it's helped me with a like a fresh approach to writing stuff about nature and ecological issues so um thank you very much brilliant stuff thank you and Gail. yeah the work by everyone else is just amazing thank you Gail. agreed Kath hi um I've never had a commission um let's hope for the future but it's it's been like having a your own personal commission to do this and I've loved the whole process the research into the poems and never produced so many sonnets in such a short space of time <laughs> so uh, thank you so much Liv and Chris and, it's, it's, and everybody it's been a really enjoyable process oh we, you are thank so you. welcome Kath thank you yeah really pleasure uh Rosie <clears throat> yeah thank you very much thank you both for organizing it all um i will sort out my camera for next time i do a reading because i realize i'd like that and um i'm slightly getting over my imposter syndrome i think i'm possibly the only carnivore <laughs> i don't know no i don't think i doubt that you are <laughs> I, I, I like okay. the fact that we had for the vegans and for the omnivores yeah. I, I like that balance that just shows the human the human race <laughs> perfect we didn't have for the fruitarians or for the breath the breatharians we could have had those two couldn't we, we but um well, yeah. maybe we did and just didn't know it so. yeah yeah so we're so just... thank you so much no really good lovely thank you thanks right and you should not feel like an imposter definitely um harula Hello, my God, this evening has been so incredible, listening to all these amazing poems and the incredible science behind them. I've learned so lot, so, so, so much. Um, and yeah, I was a bit gutted that I ended up missing the last workshop. Um, but yeah, I got the video, so that was great. And I, it was a topic that I was always fascinated by, but now because of working on the poem, I've learned so much more about it, which has been great. Um, so yeah, it's been a really great process, both as a as an artist, as a creative, as a poet, but also as a, yeah, as a human being. Um, just awesome. Thank you, Liv and Chris, and thank you everybody. And not least for tonight, because tonight's just blown my mind. Thank you for an amazing poem. And, and just to say, all of you, please, if you can make it back to, on, to Wednesday to at least some of it, you do, because there's more, there's more. Um, Mike Hunter. Hi. Um, yeah, just thanks for um, allowing me onto the project. I really, yeah, really enjoyed it. I think it's challenged me in certain ways at certain times as well. So 
um, and taught me that sometimes you've got to shelve what you're working on and start something else, follow the brief. Um, but yeah, all well, that's not wasted either. And I'm glad I got a chance to do something for um, beach cleans because I've done a few and done a bit of work with the Marine Conservation Society and um, I kind of know Martin as well. So it's a bit of a privilege to, to do something to um, respect that. Thank you. And I'll tune in on Wednesday for even, even more great performances. I'm very pleased to hear that, Mike. And I, I, we'll, we'll go to Michael. I think Mike Grenville and Emily are just non, they haven't performed tonight. Um, and I think they just might have just be just have left their cat on their phone somewhere. So whilst they've <laughs> gone off to do something else. Um, so Michael, John. Hi, um, I've, um, I've really enjoyed it. And I only came on it because many months ago, I joined a, I joined a series of, I, I decided, joined a poetry workshop organized by Morley College in London. And Chris was the co was the was the lecture was the lecturer or the the, the leader, and uh, it was incredible because it was so the the uh, the the, um, the Microsoft Teams didn't work. We ended up going off on on our own, and then we have had two sessions with Chris after that long session, long courses, and then that's how I got onto this, and it's really transformed my life in many ways. I. I've had to say I've enjoyed it. I can't explain it. So it's like a life changing experience and um, life will never, ever be the same again. <laughs> Honestly, and I don't think I, it really won't. And a number of us from the Chrissy's course, we still meet up online. Uh, and uh, I, I, I meet up with another group from, from, from my playwriting courses and I'm gonna read the poems tomorrow. And, I just feel it's uh, it, it's great. So that's all I want to say. I will say a big thank you to Chris and to you, Liv, for making all this possible and uh, sharing such a marvelous thing with so many such great colleagues. Thank you, oh, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Um, thank you. Jay, I think you're the fine. But you're the. Oh. Okay, what do I do after that? <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, say it's all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was all right, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it was brilliant, and I just loved... Um, I just thought it was brilliant how diverse it was. All the poems were so different, and, and yeah, I learned a lot, and I think everyone learned from each other, which was brilliant. I got the idea, and I, I can't wait to... To get it out there, I think it, yeah, a lot of lot of learning, brilliant facilitation um, from you and Chris. So, thanks everyone else. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. and yeah. thank you for your poem, Jay. Um, and yeah, so Chris, do you have anything else to add to just, all of that? Um, well, just to say that I am really grateful to receive those warm words and. I'm really, really pleased that this has landed in the way that it has, um, that you um, are our guinea pigs, because we haven't done this before. Um, we, Liv and I have talked a lot over these weeks. We've both led tons of workshops and courses writing poetry, but this is a new project for us. And so we, we know that it was quite, a, it's quite a roast, you know, it's quite hard. Um, and uh, the journey has been really interesting. And I, I know that in the middle of it, there was quite a kind of intense, like, oh God, how is this supposed to work? <laughs> kind of, and that is always the case in any creative process. There's always, there's always that bit where we're not sure whether anything makes sense. And uh, so just massive respect to you for kind of riding that anyway and coming out the other side and like what we just heard today is the um is the proof that something has worked something has worked uh and everyone you you've each brought your own unique style you've each really just dived into it as thoroughly and as fully as possible and i've learned so much i've learned so much about writing i've learned so much about all these different projects and uh 
yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm really thrilled. I'm really thrilled. Thank you. Yeah. And I hope that you, although still maybe feel terrified about climate change, I hope that some of you feel a little bit more sort of the, how learning more about it and learning more about the, the, the important things that are going on and it's more empowering and gives you a bit more agency. I hope that it's made things a little bit less terrifying or paralyzing. Is that the word? Um, that's what I found through doing this project is because we're consciously engaging in the hopeful stuff I've sought out and found more hopeful stuff and there's this you know there's this sort of thing isn't there this sort of this this part of your brain is like if you're looking you start looking for a particular car that you're interested in buying suddenly you see them everywhere uh, and you might never have noticed that type of car before you go oh there's there's there's, there's one and you start you start noticing and, and so I'm really interested in what is what goes on I'm fascinated with how creativity changes our brain chemistry and what it does to us to kind of calm ourselves down, to kind of process things in different ways. But, but, but equally with something like this, where these stories are so powerful and have such a hold on us, what is, what, what is, I'm still learning. What is this doing to me when I'm consciously finding and seeking out and creating more hopeful narratives and not hope based in some sort of, uh, wouldn't it be lovely if utopia it's like hope based in actual real possible projects and real things that are happening in the world so I'm yeah that's still something I'm unpacking but uh, some, it's doing something and I like it <laughs> and um, may it continue um, yeah and Tim kudos to your cats good cat bombing there by the way uh, uh, yeah it's beautiful um, so thank you everybody <laughs> we have reached the end of this Monday session please come back on Wednesday if you can and see some of the other other poems because can you imagine how good this book's gonna be what a, a smasher so yeah well let's have some music Chris and we can um, we can dance ourselves out and I will uh, I'll say thank you to the people at home who have watched it this far I'm going to 